Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh... Testing, testing, one, two. I like uh, looks we kind of back and forth on uh, what uh, what they were seeing in my pictures and ultimately decided that it was just time to send it in. They got it Thursday. I haven't heard from them yet. Um, my plan was to email them tomorrow if I hadn't heard anything by noon. May I ask, is that a new purchase or is that a used one? It's brand new. Um, I got it from a Gina Astro. I'm always like really leery about something that heavy getting shipped the way that things get shipped nowadays. So I'm not uh, I'm not freaking out about it yet. I mean, using it on Wi-Fi was pretty slick, though. It's very idiot proof. And like all of the drivers and everything worked wirelessly which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I haven't had a chance to try it totally wirelessly, um, like not using the ST4 cable at all yet, to just have Nina run the mount via Wi-Fi. That's not where, like, ultimately I want to be using it. I'd like to still have internet access on my computer while I'm using it. Uh, but the, the idea of not having any wires that run from the instruments down to a stationary part of the mount is pretty awesome, actually. Anything else? I mean, not as far as the, the mount goes. I will, uh, I'll keep in touch with Jim and John and anybody else who's interested um, as the, as things progress. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that um, is is great, Matt. That you're going to try to work with them and see if you can get us a little bit of a discount. Uh, but sounds like you guys are having pretty good success with that mount. Very good. All right. Now, uh, the board has been discussing that we should have some kind of uh, informal workshop to, well, let's say educate uh, club members on how to operate the motor on the new roll-off roof. Because it's... Oh. Great. You want to create a YouTube video? So I, I volunteered to write a work instruction for it, which should be a whole procedure, and I can do that. Um, I just need somebody to walk me through it and allow me to follow them as they do it. And I'll take pictures and I can write it. So that sounds good. So Ashley volunteers to uh, create a. Whoever is going to walk me through it. Get together. <laughs> so can that be on the website then? I can write it in whatever word format document you want. Uh, put it on the website or create like a flyer to put up in the building itself. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we can put a QR code on it. I mean, I got a movie camera. So a QR code. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, then we can link to it. I can probably bring them up. Or we can embed it in the website. Who's in charge of the... You've got, you got a document control and an IT guy, so... Who's in charge of the, the website? In charge of the website. Who's managing, maintaining, and updating Um, the, the website was created by Jason Howell. Uh, Matt Nielsen has been working with him on uh, updating it to uh, current standards. So. Okay. We are going to post it on the website. There's no reason we can't post a video or embed a video or link something or whatever as well. And people yeah. that watch movies better will have what they need, and people that read will have what they need. Has everyone heard that? We're talk so Chris and Ashley. Chris and Ashley are talking about create, creating a how-to video, posting it on our website, linking it with a QR code, 
We do. They just need to work with whoever's uh, currently managing the website. Matt, how to, how to what? What are we doing? A how to video to how, how to open how to operate the motor for the new roll off roof. Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, they're a piece of cake to post. Um, thing is. I don't know how many people that are on this call right now actually have access to the website. Let's, uh, who is it? You said it was Ashley. Ashley. Yes. And Chris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey. I see you over there. Uh, give me a minute. Let me, uh, let me find a link. I'll get it to you guys. Is Jason a current member or is he a contractor or a oh, former member? Fire member in yeah. Good spirits. Um, ask Matt about that. <laughs> we always have to do you were talking about QR code. We did, we have a QR code system just on the, on, the, you know, on the building, on the just inside the door, they can click on it with their phone and yep. bring that right up. Right. And when you get the manual, that way, you don't have a hard copy of the manual laying there. That, can get damaged. That's why there's a QR yeah. code. Everybody's got a phone. I don't know. I don't know if anybody that doesn't have a smartphone anymore. I mean, it's almost. Oh, I know a few people. Well, there there are a few of them that have been there. <laughs> not that many. But you know, they always get to it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. This is how this works. <laughs> it's the 21st century. Yeah. It's time to time to move on. As far as the star party goes, that is actually a week I will be out. So. April sixth. No. Oh, the September. Oh, the September one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh well. The twenty third and the twenty fifth. Well, I'll be flying. Okay. Yeah. Has, has has the moon been checked out for the last week in September? The last week in September. I assume we would have checked it out when we met, when we made the calendar for 2024. I can do that. It's yeah, your moon faces are ideal for the first weekend of September of the last. First weekend of the last week of September moon phases yeah. work. All right. All right. And uh request for the calendar. Screen. Well, is it, you know, if we're not gonna not gonna have any guest speakers or anything like that, you could set it first weekend in September. And if it clouds over, reschedule it for the last weekend. There's an idea. That's a great idea. That's yeah, rock and roll. Hmm. <laughs> And, uh, well, let's see. The fourth is center, but that our board meetings are on Wednesdays. So, And you could reschedule a public night for the 21st. So I'm just get, get, rid of the, get rid of the rain delay date for it. I mean, that's your rain delay night. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, this is a thought. We can discuss it in the next board meeting, sure. Sure. Okay, got that. And 
that oh, was uh john john baker is that you yes it is how did you hello All right. Going to be a good turnout tonight. All right. Um, okay. Any, any other uh, items about the observatory that uh, people want to to uh, ask? How do we get the parking lot? How do you get the damn parking lot light off? Yeah, somebody said that we could go and ask the, the ranger. I went, the house looks empty. Like even like the garage, like there are no coverings on the garage. Looked in the garage, like it's not empty. Like there's no cars there. Like it's empty. Like there's nothing in there. So if the light switch is in there, then we're not going to make very much traction because nobody answered the door. There was nothing. No, there was nothing in any of the windows. There was no apparent lights on inside. We had the same problem last Saturday. Not only the Rain there, not only the Rangers light, but that farm across the road. Yeah, they, they yeah. added that light over there at the farm. So we used the 30-inch telescope for two weekends. Um, and what happens is is that you don't notice it so much when you're on the ground because there's always a building or two in the way. But when you get on the ladder, okay, and you're looking through the 30, so now you're way up in the air. All those lights hit you at once, at once. So you get both of the, like the farmhouse lights, the ones are the, it's the, it's the buildings on the left-hand side as you approach the uh, Wapsi River Center there. So I think they're two newer constructions. And then you see the, the flagpole lights. Uh, there's like a, there was a building that I had never seen before around that flagpole area that was all lit up. And then there's also like the Ranger's house which is like due that east I think that's due east and then there's a like kind of like a parking lot light there that's on and it all hits you at once right when you want to you know right when you're on that ladder so we got to do something about some of those lights something that doesn't get us in trouble Mm. <laughs> it's frustrating enough. I might be willing to accept some trouble. Darn kids. I'll try e I'll try emailing I'll email the red I'll email the head ranger, see what he has to say about it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Um not about the observatory, so to speak, but how about the classroom? I think that uh, we had talked about trying to clean up that classroom. And I think that uh, a couple weeks, a couple months ago, and then I think that the direction was I was supposed to work with you, Robert, and try to get that cleaned up. And then I mentioned it to you and you said, hey, why don't you work with the board? So it's kind of gone full circle in that classroom has become a dumping ground from donated old obsolete astro gear. We, we need to go through it all and see what's worth keeping and what isn't. Yeah. You get some semblance of war, semblance of order in there. Yeah, you know, the trouble is when you look at some of that stuff, you're thinking, well, okay, maybe some club members might want a piece of something and they might want to make a donation for something. And then you look at some of the other stuff and it's it's not even worth the shipping costs, you know, if you would try to sell it on eBay, Astromart, or Cloudy Nights, or what have you, is the sad part of it all. Um, AB or Goodwill, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think you donate to Goodwill, it'll end up back at the observatory. And you throw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, there's so much stuff. Another thing I thought about this is just an idea to to hit around is that there's a lot of kitchen type stuff you know um there's two giant coolers there for the eastern iowa star party there's a refrigerator there's a microwave there's multiple coffee machines yet we have a room in the back which is the old dark room which is a room with the sink 
And I don't know what that room is used for, you know, what storage or something like that. And you could just take the door off the hinges, clean that room out, and just use that as a kitchen area. Buy a small. There's, I think that was planned. But it was, a, yes, yeah. Buy a refrigerator. There's, you know, there's still a that. Want to flip a coin to see who talks first? <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I think that there's like a large storage cabinet back there that can just. Um, that's I don't what, know. What. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So there's still some. Uh, we so we should double check to see what's uh, left in it, and then so the plan was to clean that out and get rid of that cabinet. More antiquated Astro gear. Get all that stuff out of there and get a um a medium sized refrigerator. And um, move all that kitchen type stuff into there, and that'll kind of help clean that out. I think that that would be um, worthwhile. We also need to clean out the cabinets underneath the kitchen sink. A lot of that is old cleaning yeah. supplies and mm -hmm. like six dozen rolls of paper towels that are and other things. So after the eclipse is over with, I think that that, that would be like a good project. Agreed. So, <clears throat> agreed. Well, we'll arrange some kind of uh, get together for club members to do that. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I got one other thing on the observatory. Yes. Um. You know, even though the roof works and we're at that at that point, well, let's let's get a video, you know, to make, show you how show you how to push a button, open and close. Okay. Uh, it's more than just pushing a button. Well any okay. any okay. What what anyway, what what is it? But anyway, what I want to talk about is that this is a, a building that's still under construction and we are not ready for public. There's construction materials left over, there's um tools uh cables and wires and what have you it's still work and there's a lot of trip hazards in there and to when john and i used the uh 30 inch i mean i think i almost tripped about three times okay even though i thought i was fairly familiar with the building and uh know what i'm doing but it's it's just a lot of stuff that you we've pushed just to the side so we could use a scope and um you know i don't know if we could make a goal for the the like a grand opening at the eastern iowa star party or what have you but you know i'm still seeing a summer's worth of stuff it's mostly inside you know it's a lot of miscellaneous stuff so well john you've done a lot of work in the uh in the new roll off building what do you think yeah i agree there's a lot of uh leftover wood laying all over the place there's like what 16 foot two by fours in there or however long they are they're super long uh i put a couple of them up in the rafters but uh that's a pretty hard thing to do by oneself uh and i finished putting the outlet on the new pier uh the other day i, I just need to hook it up to the uh, wall which is no big deal that only take about five minutes but that runs underneath the concrete, um, but it's seamless now. That huge refractor telescope has got to go, I think. I mean, it's just in the way. Jim, Jim's old homemade refractor, you mean? Yeah. You know, having, having a grand opening at my key uh, Eastern Iowa Star Party, wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe we could actually get Channel 6 to come out. Mm. And, you know, and do a little story. And they can look inside of it and see what's inside. And you know, see what's all around. And maybe we can get and some wrap it off. publicity. <laughs>
be nice if we could do that. Yes. So, yeah, we should uh, maybe plan on some week weekend uh, sometime to go out and do like a major cleanup of the of the buildings. As far as that bumper and stuff, I think uh, Habitat for Humanity will, will take all that stuff. Rolando says Habitat for Humanity would take some of the uh, leftover construction materials. That's a good idea. Will they come out and get it? I don't think so. No, they well, not that I know. I don't, know. I don't think they'll come get it. Oh. Yeah, I agree that we don't want to leave the construction material there uh, indefinitely. I think there's been some proposals to make some shelves maybe some corner bracing. So we ought to firm up what we want to do, decide what materials are needed to accomplish that, and then part with the rest of it. Um, you know, Mike Danefeld is currently our facilities director. Um, maybe we could tap into him to try to uh, uh, organize the planning effort on that. And then if, uh, um, if Mike is, you know, not able to do that, some of the rest of us could... Um, accomplish that planning session and you know put it in place so we should talk about that at the next board meeting definitely do that yes we'll do that all right moving on anybody bought any new gear recently Of course, I mentioned the Sim 60 mount. Runs great. Sim 60 mount. Anyone else? You gonna sell one of your, are you going to sell one of your old ones, Craig, or are you going to have three running operations? Well, Yes, I'm going to sell the ones I'm not using. I have a uh, a C gem, one of the originals, uh, hardly ever used, and I want to sell that. I'm going to put that online. And uh, if I if I get the right price for the Atlas, which was hypertune, there was nothing wrong with it other than that I needed something that would comfortably control the nine and a quarter HD. And I realized the either one of those mounts that, that I have would work fine, but uh, it's it's nice to have a little more control. That's why I went up in size. Yes, I will. Anyone else bought gear or has gear to sell? Well, my C gem is up for sale too. And um, I'm not getting any interest, hopefully. So I guess I'll put it on cloudy night, trade the price. Yeah, it works with the number of shipping. Yeah, but it's shipping is maybe outrageous. Plus, yeah, you can have a big amount of shipping. So I put it on cloudy nights, all house to say. I'll meet you halfway or something. Hmm. All right. Anyone else? I bought a new uh, camera, an ASI 664 uh, MC color for my solar observing. No That's idea. a pretty good job. New camera? Okay. I mean, I guess I can kind of set it to the board, but not everybody else. I got um, that mount, which is back at the factory, um, picked up an ASI, the 2600 uh, monochrome version, a uh, filter wheel for it, uh, did the uh, 36 millimeter uh, filter so that I could get seven of them in there. So I've got all the colors and narrow band all in one shot. And I picked up the uh, the electronic autofocuser, which just showed up today. So hopefully, like the imaging can be way more automated than it used to be and less fiddly. 
take a lot less time to get on target. Also ended up getting a uh, uh, Daystar Quark Chromosphere because I'm addicted to these pictures I keep seeing. Haven't had a chance to actually get to play with that one yet, but uh, that's coming real soon. So that's why we're expecting rain all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, let's move on to tonight's presentation, quote unquote. Uh, so basically we're going around to uh, all the attendees and asking where are you going and what are you doing for the solar eclipse? I'll start by saying that I'm going down to Pinckneyville, Illinois. I'm going to bring at least bring my six inch daub and my homemade solar filter. Thank you again, Rusty, for for making that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, the, have you tried my, the soul, yeah, I've, I've, yeah, I've tried a few times. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And the, my department at St. Ambrose knows I'm going down there and they want me to take pictures. So I actually bought, I borrowed the, uh, DSLR camera from the observatory after last Saturday's meeting, and I'm going to see what I can uh, what I can do with that and, and my scope. All right. What are what are other people doing for the eclipse? Well, I was I was planning to come here. Uh, you'd have to tell me where where I could set up where to park so I don't get a ticket. You're on campus? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, all right. Yeah, now it is a Monday. So um, I can put you in touch with Sophia Pierce. Uh, she's in, she coordinates all events here at the Rogalski Center. She'd probably, she's probably the best first person to contact to see where you could do that. I mean, I thought you've got students here. And, you know, you let your astronomy people know that something had be set up here. Yes. And on that note, our department bought 200 pairs of a solar eclipse glasses. Uh, Seuss and I already reserved some of those for our physics and astronomy students. And the rest we took over to the library to uh, handle distribution of the rest of the campus community. Uh, that leaves like only like 120 left for that. So, and I brought the club's glasses here. I brought the eclipse cl club's eclipse glasses here to distribute to club members who want to use some of them for uh, public events or whatever events they're doing. Yeah, those, I remember right, each, each one was 100 plus. And Mike Dannenfeld already took 20 pairs. So that leaves us, it still leaves us over 950 pairs. That should be enough. Each one is in the red. Yes. All right, Cecil's taking 100. <laughs> yes. Dana <laughs> Shade. You know, you could you could uh, throw that number out there. You know, it's not a cat or a rusty. I'm <laughs> trying to say <laughs> Right. Well, does, does anyone else here in person uh, want to want to use the glasses for uh, the the eclipse? Yeah. All right. I have to work that day, so I'm going to go out in the parking lot. So you want ten pairs? Actually, I was thinking if we, we do have quite a few left over, I could take another hundred for our library. To... We'll just save it for the next eclipse. Next year. <laughs> our study abroad students might be able to take advantage of that. <laughs> yep. I've got a bunch. Already. Rusty already has some. Okay. Yep. Uh, Rolando, do you? You need any? Yep. Okay. 
Well, if anyone online uh, wants some of our glasses, I he, uh, email me and arrange to meet up with me to get to, to get to your share. I'm good. Okay. I, I would say don't be shy about taking the glasses. All the club would ask is that, you know, you tell us you gave them out and give us some idea, you know, oh. who you gave them to so oh. we can feed that information back when we ask for money from prospective grantors. Yes, we want to keep a running tab of how many of them we distribute out as part of how many people we uh, yeah, three interact those, with. Three of those are going to go to two of our friends, at least, and one that, two that are super interested and one that's kind of interested. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have them on the public. I believe keeping a head count total would be wise as well. Because, you know, if somebody picks up a pair of glasses, they'll share it with somebody else. So they should be counted for the tally. Sure. How many people all together use them? Yes. Um, for me, I plan on being uh, just west of Cleveland, Ohio. By a small town called Avon. Going to be at a... Uh, large parking lot by a golf course there's going to be a few people there that sounds good all right talk talk to us where what are where are other people going oh uh, this is jim public library <laughs> that's what i'll be too rusty and rolando at Public All right. Yeah, I have a friend friend that has a daughter near Austin, Texas, and so we're going to meet there and stay with her for a couple nights, and hopefully we'll have clear weather. Well, good luck. Yeah, we'll be at uh, Moline Public Library. <laughs> My Alan, mind. you're 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 going to be with Rusty and Rolando. Yep, yep, that's going to be a big deal. Last uh, eclipse we were there, there was like fifteen hundred people showed up. So mm. we'll see. Maybe it won't be that big this year, but it still probably will will be quite a few. My son Eric and his wife are going to go to Wapakoneta, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what's significant about Wapakoneta? No clue. That's the hometown of Neil Armstrong. Ah. Not too far from where uh, I grew up. Hmm. Okay. Um, Chris, Ash, I'm sorry. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll be in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm taking a cruise in Australia, New Zealand, so I'll miss it. Oh, oh bummer. Well, I'm going to get go to Australia. That's not bad. Yeah, that's true. You get to see the Southern and, sky. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's, that's right. I saw the 2017 eclipse, and there's one in Spain in 2026. Maybe I'll go to that. I don't know. Why not? Yeah. If you, if you wait until July 2028, there'll be one in Australia. Yeah, I saw that. That maybe that's another goal. It's in the uh, winter down there. <laughs> yes, temperatures in the outback might just be tolerable. Yeah. Um, Chris, Ashley, what are you going to be doing? Parking lot. Yeah, almost certainly. Parking lot here. Okay. Yeah. Let's set it down. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Byron, how about you? Well, I'll just be around here. I don't have any any plans to really travel anywhere. I'll just see what I can here. Probably be working. <clears throat> yep. All right. D 
Steve? Uh, actually, I'm open right now. I don't um, see the last clips in 2017. Uh, you know, the weather is iffy, and I didn't want to um, plan any specific place or hotel or anything like that. I just got up at five o'clock in the morning. The car was already packed, and I just uh, drove to Clear Skies, ended up in Columbia, Missouri, in the uh, in a grade school parking lot. And uh, we set up, and um, I had a good time, and um, I got to see the eclipse. It was slightly hazy down there. Um, but I think I'm just going to do the same thing here is, uh, I was hoping that a couple of the members here would, uh, want to kind of get together and just, just kind of drive, just, just try to find clear skies, you know, watching the weather report, like on Sunday and, uh, you know, usually like in the Southern Illinois area or like the, in the Indianapolis area. Mm -hmm. So something that's drivable within about four hours. Well, St. Louis is about four hours. And I think Indianapolis is like about five or more. But Southern Illinois, Southern Illinois would be in the five hour range. So you, you could yes. get down there. It's just that it's just watching the weather report. So right mm -hmm. now I'm doing solo unless somebody wants to group up together and go try to catch an eclipse on Monday. So that's where I'm at. I think you guys are crazy staying home. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a heck of a thing to, 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 you know, I've only saw the, I, the only eclipse I've ever seen solar eclipse, like a total, the total one was the one I saw in down in Columbia. And I thought, man, it, what, what a sight. It was. I saw in in Nebraska, in Aurora, Nebraska. That's it. A number of us did, and yes, that was an experience. You know, you don't even need all this complicated equipment. I mean, I think that they've made it simple with like these with the glasses, you know, and um, and then just look and use your eyes. You don't need to photograph it or anything. Correct. Yep. People with cell phones. Click, click. <laughs> yeah, take a look and move on. Take a look and move on. Just, yeah. Everybody, just, quick look. All right, Matt. I'm running the S20 or S50 and let it run. That's all. Hmm. Okay. Uh. So, all right, Doc. I last week secured a camper, and I'm doing exactly what Steve's talking about doing, except I'm going to get a few days head start. Um, we're going to go wherever there's stacked high pressure along that eclipse line. Um, basically the same plan as I did for the last one, go uh, time-lapse it and then spin my uh, filter off when it's nice and just freehand it and try to memorize uh the hand movements I'm going to do on my camera, just like last time, so I didn't have to pay attention to nothing except the eclipse. It was uh, it was incredible. Where I was at last time, I only got about one minute and like 10 seconds of totality. Uh, we're shooting for anywhere at least five minutes this time. That's because it's going to be dope. Mm, I think maximum possible for this one is four and a half minutes. Mexico, Texas border. Yep. Yeah, it gets pretty deep, but you know what? Like, because it was like six and a half minutes in the Chihuahua Mountains in Mexico, and we're not necessarily against getting down there. It depends on a lot of other things, though. Well, good, good luck to you. And John, we haven't. I'm in the same boat as uh, Steve and Matt, I guess. Uh, I have several places picked out i have my son's in-laws are down in arkansas right in hardy arkansas which is right on the line pretty much in pocahontas and ash flats um that's one possible destination there are several cities right on the line uh, in southern illinois that i'm looking at mm. uh it, it depends on the weather uh i'm like steve i'm gonna see you know what where the best possible 
place is going to be and then head that direction the night before mm. or early in the morning. They they do have the the right idea. You need to be flexible as to about, about your location, depending on what the weather is going to be that day. Yeah, so. Exactly. I need to get you know, all the rest stops. Okay. And st study the back roads, because you know the main highways are going to be jammed that day. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, coming back last time was a nightmare. It was like a, my iPhone was directing me to take alternate routes to the point I was like five layers deep taking alleys around houses and towns. It was crazy. It always helps to leave the day later. It worked exactly. Enough. That that's what we did la the last yeah. eclipse. Yeah, and it worked just fine. Yep. Yep. Well, so good luck to us all. Cross your fingers for good weather. I have a program here that I found that was free. And to use it, all you need to do is load the location of where you're going to observe. And it will talk through the clock on when it starts to when totality back to, <clears throat> excuse me, post. And it's called Solar Eclipse Timer. If anybody wants to write it down, I, I loaded it. It was very simple, no charge. And it will help out. Like I said, all you need to do is open up the program, put in your location, and it will do everything else for you. Yeah, there's That's a similar cool. program called Solar Eclipse Sequencer, which will allow you to yeah. predefine what you want to do with your cameras. This is quick. just for to allow you when the, the solar eclipse, when you can take your glasses off, when you need to put it back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the se sequencer thing too, does too. Yeah, excellent. Sounds good. All right. Any, anything else about the eclipse? All right. Any new photos that anybody wants to share? I have two. Uh, one moment, let me... Uh... Okay, everybody can share their screen now. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. And the first one I'm going to show, I've always wanted to do uh, stores again, but use uh, mono. And let me see, where is it? Well, that's not it. Let's go back, try this again. All right. Hmm, no. Wonder why it's not showing. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Again. Try right again. Mm. It's a bummer. It's not showing the newest ones. I mean, huh? yeah, it, was, yeah. I mean, the only time I get to use the share is when I'm online. Let me see. It's okay here. I'm not getting the up-to-date pictures. 
No. I'll have to allow somebody else to do this. Some someone else want to turn? Does that does anyone else have picture photos to share? Yeah, I do. Um all right. Let's see if I can figure it out here on, on my iPhone. Okay. This. Can you see my? Uh... We can yeah. see. We can see something. Yes. Let's see. I don't know if you can see that image of the sun. The sun, yes. Yeah, Looks like some good flares on the. Looks like some good flares on the edge there. Yeah, I uh, took that with my new camera. And uh, these two here, this is a 2.5X Barlow on my cork. And then here it is with my 5X uh, Marlow. It turned out pretty good. What camera? That's my new camera, that uh, ASI 664MC. Uh, you say FC or MC? M as in... Uh, M -C oh, MC. <laughs> Okay, now how do I stop sharing? Okay. Oops. Looks good. Yep, nice, John. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Craig, any luck? Yeah, I'm gonna try on my phone. Just give me okay. a minute here. I think I have the tablet that I okay. Okay. Me. Echo, echo, echo. <laughs> now you know what we were going through. We need to get one of Ambrose's IT people to join the club. Or you just a number of companies sell these bucks, we call them. That's not going to build a room, we'll have enough audience. Byron, you have a bunch of new pictures on you. Yeah, I do. I have a few. You can get anywhere from 180 to $600, depending on which Okay, I have... Uh, Send us some links, and we'll, we'll, take, we'll take a look at them. Oh. Okay. That's, That's stores, helmet. helmet. That's... 
Thor's helmet, I think it's called. Is that mine? It looks like yours, doesn't it? It does look like mine. I did that uh, 218 with a 2600 mm three filters. And the other one, let me see. Is that RGB or did you use HA in there? That's HA 03S2. Now, this one I did two nights. It's uh, Bode's Galaxy M81. Yeah, you see that's it? Turned out good. Nice. Yep. So what I did is I had a problem with um, with the color diffraction in the um, one shot color. So I the next night I used the mono, the twenty six hundred mm, twenty six hundred mc, and I removed the stars from the color one and the stars from the mono, and I just added the mono colored stars into the. Uh, one shot color of the galaxy. It, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, it looks good. But thank you. Hmm. Yeah, tonight I'm going to go to a second night on the uh, cat's eye in the backyard. NGC 6543. Yeah. Yep. That's it for me. All right. Anyone else? I'll throw a couple in there. So very similar to Craig's. When was that, John? We were out there. What night was that? Friday at Minky? I think Friday night. The Friday night, yeah. I shot yeah, very uh, good. Um, three hours. I got. I managed to squeeze in before it got too low. So, in what scope is that? Is that the Takahashi? No, actually, I used the uh, Quattro, eight inch on this one. And I was trying out that, uh, I bought that uh, Neb Z2 filter, Nebula filter to, to test out. And so that was taken what, at, at Menke? Yeah. And, and right. Greg, Greg, your photograph was taken where and with what? Oh, that was taken in the backyard in Wakanda, Illinois. And it was taken with a C9 and a quarter HD with a seven reducer, seven reducer. 2600 mm, mm mono camera. That's up in the Chicago area, isn't it? Yes, yeah, north. I would say it's about 18 miles from the border, about 18 miles from the Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. I also shot the um, Owl Nebula that night. Let me go back here. This was kind of fun. Now, I think that's two and a half hours. Yeah, that's now real good. <laughs> nice. Again, like I say, that was the eight inch quattro. Then I also, I did shoot um, the seagull out there. That was during the Messier Marathon. And that was with the Takahashi and that new filter also. Oh, nice. Hmm. Yeah. 
And I did, I mean, after running this through APP, I did very little touching to it. Um, I just kind of left it alone. But this was three and a half hours. Very nice. Hey, Byron. Yes. Uh, do, yes. you see, do you see like the lower third of the image there? There's a bright star. It looks like it has like a eyebrow. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's a bow shot. Yeah, so you've got like uh, stellar wind blowing there around that star. Yes. Okay. That's cool. And then I also tried a filterless shot. And with the um, iris, it was low, though. So it was only about 10 degrees off the horizon. So I was cutting through the atmosphere pretty good, but not bad. Nice. Very nice. Lots of dark nebula and dust in there. But like I say, it was uh, it was pretty low, but. I thought I'm going to try it. What the heck? And that was probably three hours also. So yeah, just having fun with it. I don't know if I have anything else I haven't shown. Did I show you guys the tadpoles? Not here. Okay. I don't remember when I took that, but again, I think that was four hours. I, I think I took that here in the backyard. Yeah, I did. I used the um, L Extreme filter on this one. I should have used the uh, Radiant Quad, but I wanted to try the uh, L Extreme in town. I'd never tried it yet. And this, I guess I'm in a Bortle 7. It probably would have been better with that uh, quad band. That, uh, that, that camera and that quad band with that Takahashi are like a, a match made in heaven. They really, really work well together. You had a flaming star uh, and jellyfish too, didn't you? Yeah, I don't know if I should. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, the jellyfish I did in the backyard. Mm. Nice and detail. That, that's with the um, L Extreme. And, and the uh, flame, <laughs> flaming star. But the, the compromise there when you use that L extreme is uh, you don't get that reflection nebula that, you know, the blue is the, the narrow band. You can't see that, um, that coloration around the, the flaming star. But yeah. You're just getting H alpha here. Well, I got the um, the filter does um oxygen and H and uh, hydrogen alpha, yeah, but narrow band it doesn't allow the the reflection to be able to pass through as well. Um, that's more of a shot like I could do down at my parents' house. You know when that you know they're like a Bortle too. Um, you had an M forty five out there too, didn't you? M45, Rooted. no, I did, but I didn't like it. It, it was too blown out. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys the cone. This was really bad night, but I went ahead and shot anyway. Very hazy. But this was with the Radiant Triad Ultra and the, and the Takahashi in crappy conditions. I like to see what it would do if it was really, you know, clear. 
as you can All see right. the um of course I, I got this across my screen but on the very bottom you can see hubble's variable nebula down there too kind of looks like a comet yeah i think that's all i got some very, very nice photos there very nice yeah. photos just having fun yep okay well i guess it's time for the treasurer's report Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, only a bill right now that is outstanding is the mailbox because I literally just went down there tonight. Um, but let's just ignore that for now. <clears throat> went ahead and uh, broke out the uh, the fund into three actual funds. So the general fund right now has three thousand five dollars. The observatory fund is ten thousand. $704.91. We have $500 allocated for events, putting us at a total of $14,209.91. Uh, so not too shabby. Even after we uh, end up picking up that amount, we will still be well into five figures, uh, which is very healthy for this club. Absolutely. Hmm. Anybody have any questions on the uh, the treasurer's report, the state of our finances, anything like that? Matt, I do have a question. You you mentioned the uh, post office box. Are you planning to stay at the same post office or move to a different one? You know, I was going to kind of make you make the executive decision to leave it down there. I mean, we only have one post office box key anyway. It doesn't make a ton of sense. I don't know to move it. Is yeah, I think we uh, talked about that before, and it doesn't make sense just because of all the other uh, publications out there that already have our existing POS. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's not that big a deal to me to get down there. I know it was a bigger issue for people that were further away. Um, I don't see any reason to move it. Okay, if you're satisfied with that, I think that's fine. I do believe there are two keys. There shouldn't be. Um, and I remember like having this discussion with the uh, the post office quite a while ago. They can't ever make you another key, which is sort of weird. Um, but they can change the lock for way too much money and then produce as many keys as you like. So unless somebody went through and had the lock changed, there should only be the one key. I think we got a different story than you did. We must have had a better postmaster. So we we were able to get a second key. Dr. Okay. Mitchell, can you confirm that? Do you have the other key? Ms. Who, who are you asking? So this is Jim. I was asking you if you have the second key for the post office box. Um, no, I'm, I'm sure I, I'm pretty sure I gave it to someone else. Okay. Uh, you, Mike, you can, Mike, maybe. You can confirm that we have a second key, correct? E, no, I can't. Okay. Well, Matt, I'll help you find the other key because I remember you telling me this story a few years ago and, oh, sometime when I was anxiously awaiting to see if we got a uh, a check from one of our donors, I was at the post office looking in the mailbox and I just asked them, how much would it cost to get a second key? And I don't know, they told me $20 and I immediately put the money down and got that second key on order and we did get it. So I wonder which key I have then, because you, I used to have the key that was like on a wooden, I don't know, it was hard to lose. You know what I'm saying? It was like like almost like a, a miniature back scratcher. Yep, I know what you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, I do not have that key chain or whatever uh, anymore. 
So I simply have a key that I got from Dr. Mitchell. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you're, you're okay. I gave it to you. So Mike, Mike may have one then. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll check into it, but I do think there is a second key. And yeah, I think he was, he was interested in having it. Um, if there is another key, I would just like to request that it goes to Sam Snow or back to Doc. Yeah. Um, just, it, it's, um, I mean, you know, that's just more reason to keep the same post office box because we have two keys to it that we paid, paid for. Yep. Excellent. All right. So you, you, I think you have a message from our past, our second treasurer, uh, Sam, who just maybe he got a notice. So maybe you're, you're seeing that, the notice for renewal due on the post office box. Yeah, I went down and emptied out the post office box. Um, so not exactly treasurer. I sent you and Byron a, uh, a text message of a, a package that we got from uh, – uh, Dan Carpenter is the guy that we got the scope from, and he sent an adapter that he forgot to pass off, uh, which has something to do with a focal reducer. Um, I, do, I don't know. Did we get a focal reducer with that? I don't even know. Yes, he said, did. Okay, yeah. cool. So yeah. just to clarify, did, did he send the physical adapter? Yes. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, he sent it up to us. Okay, that's nice of him. All right. I, I saw that message, but it wasn't clear to me whether he was just telling us he had it or he sent it to us. No, I've got it here. Um, Good. Good. I, when, as soon as possible, I'd like to get it with the rest of the stuff for that telescope. But I think John and I can work that out. Yeah. <clears throat> um, before we continue here, um, so to sum up, the general fund is $3,005. Observatory fund, $10,704.91. Events fund five hundred dollars total fourteen thousand two hundred nine dollars ninety one cents. Does anyone want to make a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Aye. Cecil moves. I'll second. I'll second. Moves to approve. Craig seconds. All those in favor of approving the treasurer's report. Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. <laughs> Who's the wise guy? <laughs> well, he's outvoted, so the report is approved. All right. Now, is there any other business that we should bring up tonight? So we're what, we're done with all the agenda items. Um, I I have one thing. Mike Dannenfeld did stop at my place a couple of days ago. Gave me some uh, a bunch of information on the uh, digital lock on the roll off roof. Uh, let's see, on the digital keypad. There's a uh, info from the box that came in, and a couple of backup keys to use in case uh, like the power goes out and we need to bypass the digital lock. And he also gave me a sample of a paint chip, uh, which I think he said was uh, for the outside of the roll-off building. And basically, I'm asking, who should I pass this on to? Who, I, who I, in charge of building maintenance? That'd be our facilities director, right? Sure. Well, I can take one of the keys. Uh, who who should have the other one? So we're talking uh, about I can take key. I can take a yellow one if you want. This is John. John, okay. I'm up, up there quite a bit. And... Why don't we uh, get a, a spare to go into a locked box in the conference room? Yep. I was just okay. thinking about that. Out of uh, uh, dire straits. Somebody would be able to make a phone call, find out what the code is, and open it up and use it. But other than that, I think the box would be good security. 
So John, why, why, John, why don't you take one of the keys and then we put the other one into the lockbox. Okay, I was thinking vice versa, but that's fine. All right, well, um, email me and we'll work on getting together sometime to do that. Okay, yeah, and I'll get some sunglasses, solar glasses from you too. Sure. All right. Um, just to clarify the lock box we're talking about, is that a different one than from what's on the old roll off building? I think we were talking about getting some other one for. Yeah. We get a new one, I think. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or we can uh, mount one on the box on the wall inside the conference room, put a lock on it with a combination. That's a possibility. We'll, we'll discuss specifics at the next board meeting. Yep. All right. Is there any other business we should? Yeah, I got something. Yeah, Steve. So, uh, you know, we've got that eight inch F15 refractor that we've had for quite a while. And now the club has purchased the six and a half inch refractor and and maybe this summer with the uh, both scopes sitting next to one another, you know, we can make a, you know, try to get a disposition on this uh, F-15 refractor that we've had. So you'll have two refractors sitting right next to one another and club members can take a look at it and uh, weigh in, right? You know, to see, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, it's uh, old school versus new school. So I think that that would be a uh, uh, a neat project. The other thing came up with is that when the club purchased the six and a half inch refractor, it came with an, an unusual accessory. That telescope has a, it, it came with a three inch diagonal and a three inch eyepiece. And I didn't Correct. even know this stuff existed. It's got and, a three inch draw tube. Huh? There's a three inch draw tube. Yeah. So, I didn't even know the three inch accessories uh, even existed. So the, the eyepiece is a 30 millimeter, 100 degree uh, explore scientific uh, eyepiece. And I guess that's, um, and if you have it, you hold it, it's like a five pound eyepiece. It's just a monster. And I was just sitting there when John showed it to me and you're sitting next to that 30 inch scope and you're thinking, you know, a size it's, an, an accessory of this type you would think would go like on a big scope like Cecil's, but you would need a three inch focuser. So you go home and you start doing the math, you start doing the ray tracing and you <laughs> find out this 100 degree folk, uh, eyepiece, three inch eyepiece, you know, with monster 20 inches of, or yeah, 20 millimeters of eye relief and all that. It, it's, it's an exact match of what you would want on Cecil scope. I mean, to have 30 inches of aperture working for you, 100 degrees, you and a lot of eye relief. Okay. And, and the... Yeah, uh, $10, <laughs> hey, and we got $10,000, and <laughs> so... My only, my only thing about that, Steve, is as cool as it sounds, where are you going to requisition a three-inch coma corrector? Because... Most of the yeah. view is not going to be you know something. No, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a rebuttal on that. Cause I, I, I think that the optics in that scope are good. And you're saying, well, it's, it's not having to do with the optics it has to do with the 4.2. Right. You know what? I'm using my Naglers and these are just as well corrected. I don't see any noticeable coma at the edge. Without a coma corrector. Yeah, I'd love to check that out. I haven't been out yeah. there through the 30 in forever. Yeah. Uh, I don't wear any glasses, so I tend to usually get my eye 
a lot closer to the porthole. Um, but I'd love to see it. I got, were you around that, that star party, Steve, where we, um, there was a explore scientific actually donated us a 5.500 degree. And I, I won that eyepiece and, um, I tried it in three different telescopes, including the 20 and just yeah. the outside edge of it was just too gnarly. It was, it was too distracting. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I think that, um, what we can do is take that eyepiece and put it in the, um, the refractor because it com it came with a three inch diagonal and you can kind of see it i mean i have no experience with these i mean i just use negligence yeah, <laughs> yeah and your televisors are probably better than the i have a lot of the es 82 degree yeah. um, and the reason i stuck with those is because they didn't get wide enough for um to look really ugly in reflectors but i'd i'd love to be proven wrong on that for sure yeah, I I used uh, you know quite a few eyepieces the lat those two nights, and um, I did not see any, anything noticeable on the edge of the field. Yeah, I got to get out there. That's all I have. I think it'd be an awesome project. <laughs> it would be too. I went looking for uh, focusers. Uh, very recently, and Moonlight only makes motorized focusers now, which I was kind of disappointed to find out. They don't make the old school like feather touch anymore. Yeah. So a, a three inch feather touch for Cecil scope would be about fifteen hundred dollars by the time you buy the focuser, the base plate, the three inch to two inch adapter. <laughs> only one way to find out. Yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, a bad. Not necessarily a bad investment if that eyepiece works on it. We we'll probably have, have to pull the focuser time. off um, and just literally hold the eyepiece there and see how well it works. What's what's the focal length on that three inch eyepiece? Thirty. Okay. It's, I've it's, got it. I've got it. A, uh, I've got a twenty millimeter, one hundred degree. I haven't had a chance to use it yet on there. Yeah, we were comparing like a Teleview 55 plus, and then I've got the 26 millimeter Nagler and the 16 millimeter Nagler. And so I didn't have any problem with those. I, I thought the optics, the optics were a lot better than I thought it was. What's the apparent field of view on a Nagler? 82. Okay, yeah. only been talking about more work work upgrades and Cecil scope so we just one more possible one more possible item to the list yep. all right is there anything else I got just a question for the astrophotography brain trust um I have uh I've been using like an Orion Starshoot auto guider, which is just like a webcam, you know, like 1.3 megapixel camera, I think it is. And uh, something that I've, it's all that has always driven me nuts um, about it is how skinny that field of view is, even in an 80 millimeter scope. But I was trying to figure out if it actually made any sense to purchase a guide camera, like a color guide camera with a larger sensor that I could maybe use for planetary. Or does that sound like it could potentially just be a waste of effort if it's mostly for guiding? I believe it would work. I mean, it would work, but like, if, I mean, I got a, a camera now that I got dirt cheap forever ago. I'm just kind of looking at the ones that I'm seeing online, kind of the sensor size I was looking at starts at about 400 bucks. Just trying to make sure that's not a waste of money. ZWO came out with a 220. You might want to look at that. I don't think you need anything more than that. ASI 220? Yes. Yeah. It's a pretty good size tip. I use the 120. It works fine. Yeah, so do I. The one I just bought, that uh, 664, uh, can be used for guiding also. Yeah, there was... I 
It looked like there was one kind of in the middle there too. There's a six six four. Yeah, the four point, the four megapixel one. Yeah, I mean that That's would the be the the other kind of like interesting way to go because it's twice the resolution. If if it were to get used for planetary. Um, what size is your guide scope? You said 60. Um, the way that I'm going to end up having two separate scope packs that will be set up for the Eclipse, one will be an 80 millimeter, like short tube 80, old school Orion, you know, uh, the little plastic one. And then I've also got a uh, an AstroTech 80 millimeter. So one's 400, 400 millimeter, and the other one's probably closer to five, like 480. Yeah, so like I said, if, if, it's, if it's flat, it's a piece of fiber that sits on it, it's got a bigger hole. Okay. You're good. What we're going to do with the second? All right. Does that matter? Okay. Is there anything else? Nope. Any Anything else you want to bring up tonight? If nothing else, then does anyone want to make uh, our next board meeting is April 3rd. If there's anything you think we should bring up at the board meeting, please email us before then. Our next general meeting is April 15th. We may use that. Maybe we could use that presentation to share our, our experiences with the total eclipse or with the eclipse. How does that sound? Good. And any photos? Good. Yep. All right. Then do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Move. Cecil moves to adjourn. Second. Do I have a second? Who, who seconded? Me, Byron. Byron seconds. All in favor of say aye. 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 All opposed. Be aware I do have to lock up the room when, when, we're, when we're done. Mm -hmm. All right. It was a good meeting, everyone. Th thanks for coming out. Thanks for logging in, and we'll see you all again soon. Good night. Thank you. Good night. But I sent you some audio options. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Also, she keeps describing me as an IT person. That's my past life. Oh, actually, you wanted to uh, 10 pairs here? Yes. Okay, so this is an open. That one's open. Yes. <laughs> All right.